Hi everyone, Wally Nichols with the Asset Guidance Group weekly update for the week ending June the 10th, 2022. We've got about 55 minutes left in the trading session. Uh, Dow's down 2.22, which is a much improved from a few minutes ago. The S&P 500 off 2.44, the NASDAQ off uh, 3.10. It's fallen back down a little bit. Uh, it was um, a little bit more improved than that earlier. The Russell 2000s two, down 265. Curiously, the VIX, I, I, I would have thought, would have been a little bit higher. It's, it's still below 28. I uh, would have thought with this kind of a big, huge red uh, streaks down the candle, uh, down the uh, down the screen today, uh, that we would have seen uh, you know, a VIX above uh, 29, but uh, not to be. What's driving all of this? Inflation, 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 inflation. Okay, so what's the thing there? Probably more likely than not, energy. Uh, is is the big thing that's uh, that's hitting uh, mom and pop. Uh, our retail earnings are off because people uh, perhaps aren't buying, and that means uh, inventory stack up. So the number came in at hot uh, 8.6, uh, highest in 40 years. They were thinking that maybe it was going to be 8.2, and so that that just trampled expectations. Here's the thing. Uh, what was uh, what that was leading us towards was that uh, the Fed is uh, coming out next Wednesday, the FOMC with their new minutes and, and meeting next week. They were going to expect that, you know, they've been saying that they were going to come out with another 50 basis point increase in the short term race, the overnight race. But what they're probably going to do now is increase that and come in much higher. OK, um, uh, we would like to see them. It's, it's been death by a thousand cuts or said another way from an old adage. The beatings will continue until morale improves. Okay, that's kind of the way that it falls out here. Uh, they have, have got a, around, you know, uh, 80, 85 basis points right now. 86 uh, is where we at in the Fed overnight. Uh, currently, 0.83, I think, is exactly precisely what it is. They they need to be around two and a half to to three is probably what they were shooting for in order to stop this. Um, right now, your 2 two ten ratio is 0 0.93. So what you've got is a, a flattened yield curve, all right? So the 10-year is, is 2.16 right now, just give or take a, a basis point. And, 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 and you're, you're going to have, the Fed is going to have to come in uh, at least 50 bips, probably 75 uh, a lot of a lot of smart people are coming in and begging them just to come in on 100 basis points and get it on over there. All right. Well, maybe I'm talking Greek and gibberish. Why does it matter? All right. So I'll try to step back away from the wonky stuff. Those are the facts. Uh, let's talk about why it matters. Well, it matters because you've got your short term rates the same as longer term rates. That means that the Fed is going to just go ahead and throw us up with an inversion or inverted curve. Uh, into a recession, uh, probably. All right. So we're talking ourselves into a recession, whether we should be in one or not. And that's going to be what it takes in order to uh, in order to get uh, get this uh, under control. If they can do it, if they can do it, uh, uh, interest rates drive a lot, don't drive everything. Let's take a deeper dive into this 10 year study in the break even inflation rate, which is now 2.74. All right. Let's get into it. OK. This is from a report. This information is from uh, a report done by the Congressional Budget Office, all right, uh, in 2021, for, for 2021. We were looking at a 10-year a Treasury note. They wanted to do this under control and go from uh, where we were back at, to be at the uh, end of the pan uh, pandemic, while we were still in that, to 2030. And, and their target for the 10-year in 2030 was um uh to to it was it was not to hit three percent until 2027 and then three and a half percent by 2030 the uh fed funds rates were supposed to have hit 250 2.5 in 2030 where are we at now so that's a nine-year projection at the time about nine and a half year projection when the uh, cbo did this report where are we today we're midway through 2022 what's the 10-year the 10-year is 3.16 and the and the overnight rate right now is their goal used to be below about 25 basis points okay and they weren't going to hit 
0 0.5 until 24, 2024. Now we're adding 20, I mean, uh, we're adding, adding 50 basis points per month for the last three months, all right? And we're at 0 0.83 right now. They're going to add at least 50 uh, basis points next week. That'll be June, and they're talking about a couple more. So you're looking at, over the next 90 days, another 90 basis points. So that would put us around 1.7 around by Labor Day. And you can see that we were not supposed to be at that level until 2028. So we're six, eight, nine years ahead of schedule on interest rates. What's the big problem with that? Well, let's take a look at that, all right, real quick. Uh, uh, if I can, if I can move over over to that, the problem is, is that with those kind of yields, uh, the, the, there's too much federal debt, so there's too much public debt, there's too much corporate debt, okay, and 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 it's it's not sustainable. The higher interest rates aren't sustainable. The stock market can't go on if you can get with with these kind of interest rates. If you can get over three percent on the ten year, which is risk free, the risk free standard, then how much more of a premium are you going to demand to get into the actual markets uh, uh, and take on uh, equity risk? And if you're a corporate uh, manager then you have to look at, at the cost of debt, the carrying debt versus equity. Uh, the levels of debt are simply too high to sustain these kinds of interest rates. So what does that mean? You're definitely going to pull the stock market back. You're going to have to, the, at, at this point, like I said earlier, they're, they're flattening the yield curve out, pushing the economy right to the brink, if not over, into recession. And you have these very, very high interest rates. So there's too much corporate debt. They can't translate that into equity debt because it requires uh, too much earnings. Right now, where are we at on earnings? Well, if we're still at 16, 17 uh, price earnings multiples, um, then where does that put the stock market? The S&P 500, uh, you can do some just down and dirty math. And say 3,200. All right, I think that that's too aggressive. But uh, there's smarter people out there that are actually managing these things that are are are, are calling for that. In the short term, perhaps. I mean, it looks more reasonable to me to look at a at a 3,800, 3,850 right now at a stopping point. Uh, sometime next week, maybe we hit uh, 37, 30, 3,750 somewhere somewhere down around there. So uh, bottom line is, is, that, uh, is, is, that, that is that that's the situation. There's too much debt. There's too much public debt. There's too much private debt uh, for these kind of interest rates. And where we're at, the reason that this is a problem is because uh, they didn't want to hit, the CBO didn't want to hit uh, the trillion dollar mark until 2030. We hit that earlier this year. We've already gone above it and we're, that was projected. Uh, you know, maybe 100% GDP. Now we're already at 125% of gross domestic product. GDP is the total measure of all the total goods and services produced by the economy. So we've already blown all of their calculations and projections out of the water um, at this point. And, um, and so the Fed is probably going to have to be very aggressive, come in with well over 50 basis point hike uh, next week. Look for it to be uh, at least 75. And, uh, you know, at that level, uh, let's go back and take, and we'll close out by taking a look at the charts, and then you'll see why uh, our recommendations or advice are what they are. All right. Okay, this is the uh, S&P 500 here. I've got this uh, crunched up on a weekly basis, but you can see why we're making the case for the 3850. And the, uh, the, that's the, the bottom horizontal line that I've got drawn across here, right, right here. You can see we've come down and we've touched that a few times here. Now, this candle is, um, is, is a down candle to be sure, but it, it's, it's looking um, uh, really bearish, but not as absolutely bearish as it did earlier in the day here. We've got about 30 minutes left in the day. Um, 
but uh, this is the case for the 3850, as well as uh, I can also see 3750. Uh, in a really, really um, uh, expanded or drawn out downturn, then perhaps we start looking at, you know, the 3200 uh, levels and go down there. It seems like we, we, we would have reached some rational uh, stopping point before then, uh, because how much of this haven't we already priced in? So if, there, if, if the powers that be are pricing in at least another 150 basis points on top of the 83 we already have, that puts us at uh, at what three thirty, right? That puts us where the where the and that's the that's the federal funds rate. That's not that's where the ten year is right now. So we can imagine what uh, what might happen uh, to the ten year uh, yields and, and and longer, if indeed by by Labor Day we have uh, three thirty. So going into the fall, we have three thirty plus on the federal funds rate. Uh, that that would make the case uh, perhaps lower, but it, it, everybody already knows this, so this is already going into the algorithms. Uh, it seems to be uh, rational that um, people aren't just going to quit the economy. People are still going to work. There are a lot of there's a lot of employment. I, I, this is going to work against the uh, housing industry. All right, so that bubble is going to uh, go ahead and burst. Uh, because it's going to filter into everything, uh, home mortgage rates going up, uh, consumer debt, uh, consumers are in pretty good shape in terms of uh, the, the, their, their debt, but the corporate debt is something that's to be reckoned with, and the, uh, the stock market, so there's the way that we do the capital asset pricing model, the risk-free component becomes so large that the risk component uh, demands so uh, is so high and and uh, you know price earnings multiple I, it just the math becomes uh, extraordinarily difficult to imagine uh, absent some huge reshifting uh, how how equities can can go forward with this point so that's that's the dicey part the good news is is that we're going to get through it, all right? We're going to get through that. We're just in the process of digesting the information. And uh, having said that, you can you can look at these at these candles that we have. And sure, there's a lot of red on the board, but by the same token, there's a lot of sideways action on the board too, and it hasn't just completely fallen out, all right? We don't, we're not at a bottom, but there is some stabilization there, and people are looking to where you might see a bottom. Capitulation, I don't know, a lot of people are saying you know, the VIX needs to be at 40 and there needs to be so no uh, other, uh, other you know, hope left on the board. That seems a bit draconian to me, uh, but, uh, you know, if that's the way it plays out, that's the way it plays out. I don't think that it gets that, hard, uh, that far, but the point is, is that protect yourself while you're out there. The good news on the other side of the coin is there's a lot of opportunity out here to get really quality equity buys uh, on the cheap as it were, but also very, very uh, good plays and good yields in a number of different uh, areas. It's just an issue of managing the risk. And that's what we do. We don't guarantee returns. We don't, we don't manage for returns. We manage the risk. And that way, the dog's wagging the tail, not the other way around, all right? And so from that standpoint, you should feel confident. You should feel happy. And uh, if, if, you, if you're still at risk and you're uncertain, give us a call. Get with us. We can build you a plan. We can show you how to manage that risk and turn it into uh, a situation where you're not you're you're focusing your money first on on spending for yourself and your lifestyle and not supporting crazy politicians and and, and the government through taxes etc unnecessarily that you shouldn't really be doing and that way you know that your lifestyle is is in place your core lifestyle is in place before your feet hit the ground in the morning that helps you sleep better at night and that helps you stay happier because we know when we stay happy you know, all of this other stuff is just icing on the cake, all right? When we stay happy, we live longer. Happiness has been shown to be the key to longevity. All right, until next week, it's going to be a better week. And it's the summertime anyway, right? We'll see how it all works out, okay? I'll see you then.